Hello and welcome to URP Practical Talk. I'm your new host, George Gonzalez. Of course, we'd like to turn it over to a familiar face you all probably know, Dr. Vishnu Bandhu. Hi, uh, how are you? Thank you, thank you, George. Yes, and also we have another not so familiar face to the Guyanese audience. If you could please just introduce yourself real quick. Good day, everyone. My name is Eileen Ledger. I'm from Region 1 and I am the Vice Chairman of the New York URP Group. Great, and so we'll come back to ask you a few questions, but first, as always, we're gonna take it over to the doctor. Um, so, how are you doing? The I'm doing fine, George, I'm doing great. Great. You know, very good. Great, so, of course, this is our first episode for the new year, you know, definitely yeah. great to, I guess, to be back. Yes, yes, very good to be back. Yeah. Right, and so, um, well, you know, we'll start off with, I guess we'll just go right into it. We can just go into the questions if you don't fine, mind. Fine, Okay, great. Um, now, I've heard that just a couple days ago, actually last month, that uh, the URP had opened a new office in Essequibo. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, in Essequibo, uh, we opened an office um, Saturday gone, the 27th of January. Um, and we had a very good turnout um, in spite of the weather, in spite of they had four funerals on the Kibokos, very huge funeral. And the rain was pouring from morning to evening. Um, we still able to attract 300 people at the mm -hmm. opening. And I, I challenged them at the end of the opening to march with me for unity. And they all get up and they, we march around a few streets in, uh, on Regina. The rain at mid of the march, the rain start pouring down and everybody stay in the march, nobody left the march. And that give us a very good signal that Guyana ready for true democracy and for a real change in Guyana. So we are very happy. We have people from the Pomeroon River, all over the coast, all over people come out. And in spite of the bad weather, as I said, and you know, it, it turned out very well. Wow, so it sounds like you had a very good turnout. So um, that do you feel the community as a whole, they're, they're real accepting to the message of the URP? Oh yes, oh yes, they are accepting it. In fact, um, people have been coming in, uh, the office there, and they start joining up members, and we have been, able to attract a lot of members in the URP right now. So this is since the opening lab? Um, no, we had, this is the official opening. We had opened since November the 1st, the office. But last Saturday was the official opening of the office, where we invite people from all over to right. come. But before that, people had been walking in the office, literally, joining up, signing up membership form and pay their fees and so forth. Mm, so it seems like the interest was already there without even having to really... Definitely, ah, definitely. It was very, very, very good. That's you great. Know? Yeah, that's great. Mm. And um, so also, um, in addition to the opening of the office, that you've had a new development, or rather I should say a a return. It sounds like the Republican newspaper is uh, back yes, in publication. Yes, we, we, had, we had started our Republican newspaper on the last general election. We have been doing it, and we decided last month to start the new publication of the Republican paper. You know, um, because we need to get more of our ideas out there to the people. We have been sending out press release, but all, all the newspaper does not carry the press release. Um, only the, we found that the Kaicho News usually carry it, you know, whenever they feel like to carry it too. But we need to pump in more often in this. You know, it seems like the newspaper has their own people who they are supporting also. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's like a whole cliqueism going on in this country. You know, news are not going how it should be going. It goes because who like who, you know. And that, that's how it goes. And so then that's great that you have the newspaper to really use as a medium to 
express the goals and express the beliefs of the party. So uh, could you could you tell us a little bit about the content of uh, like what would we expect in the Republican newspaper? Well, in the Republican newspaper, the content will will tell you about little about different things in the country, what is happening. It will tell you about the, the, the youth section. It will tell you about the adult section. It will tell you about the local government election, especially, which is supposed to be this year. You know, um, all that the newspaper, those information you will get from the newspaper. Um, if the, we are not saying that we are only printing things for the URP, but we are printing things, whatever happened in the country, what good, what bad, and what we think should happen. Yeah. To portray ourselves as the URP, the vision of the URP, you will be seeing it in our newspaper. Yeah. So, um, so essentially like current events, but with like the URPs, uh, through the URP's perspective, essentially. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay, so I guess uh, speaking on the URP's perspective on a current event, uh, a big one, everybody knows about big one, that's probably yeah. on everybody's mind, of course, the yeah. Guyana-Venezuela border controversy finally you know, going to the ICJ. Uh, so what is the party's opinion on that? Well, the International Court, um, the UN had able to forward this case, this matter to the um, international court, and I think it's a very good, good idea. Uh, it's a good thing they did, because this matter should rest one and for all. Because this has been, I, I thought it was settled since the 1970s and 80s, you know, but it doesn't, it doesn't seem like it's really settled because the fuel comes up there now, and it seems like that arise some new problem in the Venezuelan area because they want to claim that, you know, they have owned own half, own that area and, and things like that. So let the world court, court deal, deal with it because it's very unfair on the Venezuelan part to try to, you know, they have so much already. We are so small, they still want to take from us, you know. So we should, we should, for once, once and for all, we should be able to, to settle this matter in the world court. Absolutely, and, and I just think to myself that it's a very significant part of Guyana, that not even in terms of just sheer square footage, but yeah. also, I mean, this is a very productive, where a majority of our productive sectors come from, that mm. it's, yeah, no, yeah, no. I, you know, when, mm. when a secure area, that area, mm. is the, the, the most wealthiest area in this whole country, mm. is the secure area. You know, and you, you're trying to take, you know, everything away, the little that we are having, you want to take it away. The other day, the Suriname was trying to take a part of us again. Mm -hmm. We went to the, the UN and we won that case. And this one, I showed that we don't want it again because it belongs to the Guyanese people. You know, we are, we are a very peaceful set of people. We are not the fighting kind of people. You know, but, but don't step on our toes. You know, I think the Venezuelan is going too far now in this. So we have to put it to rest or once in a while. You know? Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes, and um, so you would have, well, taking it back to the newspaper now, uh, that you would have mentioned in the newspaper that one of the things uh, you said is actually the Republican youth wing. Um, a lot of our viewers may not, may have not heard of it, or may not know too much about the Republican Youth Wing. So, can you tell us a little bit the about the Republican it? New Youth Wing? Mm -hmm. Is the, the the youth section of the news of the, the Republican? Mm -hmm. You know, um, young people, male, female, all is a part of the Republican Youth Wing, and the youth are very excited about the Republican Youth Wing in Guyana. We had formed up one in Esikubo, we formed one in Burbis, we are forming one in Linden this coming week, you know. Um, so the youth them, I found that they're very, very excited, you know, and the Republican youth. Um, I think we'll be doing very good because URP has been paving a way, way for the younger generation, you know, because the younger generation is the future of tomorrow. 
And this is what the URP wants to see. You see, politics is like a puzzle, as I always said. You know, what the young people have, we elderly people does not have it. And what we have, the younger people does not have it. So if you can put the two together, then you make a complete, you know, a complete political party or a complete government. Because the young people have today, in today's world is technology. The young people has all the technology. But they do not have the experience and the elderly people has that experience. So if you can combine it together, then you make a perfect world, or a perfect country, or a perfect political party. And that's what the URP is all about. To give the younger generation a chance because tomorrow is your day, the young people. No, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And so, and I think that's so crucial because you find that often uh, the youth they're just neglected. Um, you know, it seems that the only time the youth, per se, are, are have any concerns a lot of politicians is just around election time, if they're over 18. Mm -hmm. you, you know, but it seems that other than that, that no, that um, I'm not really seeing as much of a... a Groups like your, like you know, like the URP wanting to come to, to elevate, mm -hmm. uh, so to speak, the right. youth in the party. Mm -hmm. um, so, so how? What are some of the? I guess some of the ways that the the young Republicans actually help with the party. Now, uh, the young mm -hmm. Republican will able to. They will have several seminar classes for them, mm -hmm. trying to teach them ways of leadership. Mm -hmm. You know how to run things. Uh, how to be good managers, you know. We focus heavily on businesses and things like that. You know, learn you to do management section. Because that is something very lack, you know, we lack of management in Guyana. You know, we don't have good managers, right? And we need to, 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 to train these young people for them to be real managers. You know, if you have to bring people from overseas to train them, we will do it if we don't have the qualified people here. And that's what the URP want. We want to be, we want people to be professional in whatever they are doing, you know. And do it, we are looking also that people must be able to accept that, you know, this country here is our motherland. And it is your duty to protect it. And you must be able to concern with everything that happened in Guyana. See, young people, we, are, we have been training them in politics or to get involved in politics, you know. And that is why you see that we are bringing people from overseas to do work here. We are, we are training people at university and so forth to do things. And then you said, well, these people don't have experience. Well, how would they have experience if you don't give them a chance yeah. to work with some experienced people to gain that experience? As you know, recently we, we employed somebody from Jamaica with GPL. You know, I am sure we have people around who can run GPL instead of bringing one from Jamaica. You know, but people are not having a chance. Somebody along the the, the minister who is their friends or something like that, yeah, yeah. I give you a job, man. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And that's how it goes here. You know, it's who knows who. That's how it works. You know, um, it's a sad situation for Guyana, the way we operate. You know, it's very important that we examine ourselves. Let us examine ourselves. You know, I always said on the religious platform, if I, if I ask you a question, I said, you know, somebody asked George and Vishnu. Vishnu, tell me, out of you and George, which one of us is the bad guy? You know, Vishnu, I'll point my finger like this mm -hmm. to you, George, and say, you are the bad guy. Look, two fingers pointing to you, mm -hmm. and three, three is pointing to myself, mm -hmm. telling me that I'm three, three times worse than you. So we do not examine ourselves. You know, we always point fingers to people. Let us learn to try to examine ourselves before pointing that finger. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I find that that 
management or at least that learning that management that developing the youth is so crucial especially when I, I also recognize the irony of it where you have the political parties of the past uh, that have been in control I mean you we once had the second youngest president in the yeah, world yeah. you know that we've had a lot of these young people would have started these parties you know way back then mm -hmm. and just are not letting go or mm -hmm. not trying to lift yeah. up the youth to train them to mm -hmm. eventually take over mm -hmm. the reins so I I find that's very very important very yeah. crucial that yeah. you're doing that mm -hmm. yes and so um, we would have also mentioned that local government elections was in the um, the newspaper as well. Well, the local government election on the last local government election, mm. URP didn't didn't take part because we always feel that local government election, political parties should stay out of it mm. and let the people run it themselves. Let all the community run it. We had, in the last election, local government, we had supported some of these independent parties to run for local government election. But nevertheless, the PPP and the PNC bulldozed the APNU, they bulldozed the whole election. Mm. So in our executive, our meetings that we had, we come to the, the, the agreement that we will contest this local government election throughout Guyana. All the municipal election, all the NDCs, URP will be contesting it. And I'm, 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 I'm calling on people out there, those of you who want to see justice and fairness, contact the URP. Our number is on the screen. Contact us so that you can be a part of able to control your own community. You know, you must able to control yourself. And the URP will give you that chance so that you can be able to know what you want and what you don't want. So we are here to support you. We are here to work with you. We are here to make sure that justice prevails in Guyana. And so, I mean, this, this is big. That, that, that is pretty big. I mean, the, the party has been around that well over 30 years and that this is a a shift to the yeah. local contesting local government that that's yeah no, that that is a that's a serious no, no, development let, let me cut you into something uh -huh. um yesterday at the meeting mm. we had in in um line line path that in the Barbies area yeah. right one of the guys that came at the meeting and I, I could have dropped it he pulled out a urp card from his pocket like brand new. 28 years ago, he had joined the URP. Wow. Right? Right there and then I tell the guy, look, we will pay for his membership right away. You know, this is a URP man. And he said, you know, his wife always tell him, why are you keeping this card? Why you don't throw it away? This guy said, will not come back here? He said, no. I will not throw away this card. I will keep it. I believe that these guys will be back. And it was so amazing. That was the best part of me yesterday in Line Path in Burbeast. Elaine was there when that happened. We took a picture with the guy with a card and everything. 28 years ago. Card is brand new. Wow. Yeah. And that is truly a testament to the support to the real belief yeah, that people yeah, have behind yeah, this yeah wow, that is yeah. great yeah. absolutely wow and, and so well um you know speaking of uh the fact that that miss elaine was there that uh, i'm sorry miss ledra that um that you were there so i guess we'll actually just take it to you for a second um so can you tell us a little bit about your experience so far? Because apparently you were here for the opening of the Sequibo branch and you also, you've been here for a little while. So can you tell us? Yes. Um, I live in New York. I mean, I leave Guyana since 1988. This is my second visit to Guyana in all those years. Um, I came for the opening of the office in Sequibo. I was very impressed to see so many people want to change in Guyana. You know, they be complaining of the hardships 
they've been complaining of not having enough salary wise or almost everything mm -hmm. and it's very heartbreaking to see how these people really really suffer after 50 years of independence in Guyana mm -hmm. and these two parties being they're not helping our people mm -hmm. so I came for the opening I talked to the people I was very impressed of the you know the the support they show, the URP, and Dr. Vishnu Bandhu. So my taking into this is that we are going for a big change in Guyana. I really do believe that. That's great. And so, well, I guess that's your experience in Guyana and with um, people here now, but can you tell us a little bit about the party supporters in New York? I was the vice chairman of the New York chapter of the URP. Um, we have lots of supporters. We have, you know, we, myself and the chairman we work and the other members of the group, we work very, very hard. We do fundraising, we're getting people to join the party and, you know, and telling them, like enlightening them about what the URP will do for Guyana and the vision Mr. Bandu has for our country. I mean, we all leave Guyana. Guyana is our home. Whenever people say, oh, I don't want to go back to Guyana, things are bad or, you know. But when they got a vacation, where are they going? Back okay. here. Mm -hmm. So if we want to make a change here, we want to see a different Guyana, let's all come together. You know, regardless of our background or who we are, we should come together and make it happen under the URP. Because the URP is to unite. And we need unity in Guyana right now. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And so, I mean, it seems like you've got a that you have an understanding of how uh, the support base is in New York. Um, you know, I guess you got a little feel of it um, down here, uh, both in Rabis, uh, you know, also region. So just all throughout the the region. That um, I, I guess, how, how does that make you feel? I feel good about it. I mean, coming home and going about the country. I was in Esco for five days from Supernam to charity, talk to people. I was in Burbies yesterday. It really made me feel like if, um, you know, I want to come back to live here, you know. And I want to really, really help those who I can help, the less unfortunate ones. What amazed me too, it's the, the women they're begging, you know, strong women. I mean, Guyana is a land of plenty. Why beg? You know, it's it's very heartbreaking to see they're stretching their hands out. Nothing to do, no homes. You know, I went to the border market on Friday. And they just sit there drinking and nowhere to sleep. No place to call home. This shouldn't be happening in Guyana. Not after 50 years or more. So it's very, very troubling to me. And you feel that the URP can really be that force to bring that change? Yes. I was never in politics. It's my first time in politics and after meeting Dr. Vishnubandu, I realized he has a vision for Guyana. And if we should all come together, I think we could make that vision a reality and make it happen. Absolutely, absolutely, and par powerful observation as well. Thank you. No, thank you. And um, I guess, were there any uh, other um, parts of, I guess, parts of your experience thus far being down here that you'd like to share? All the way, I mean, since I was growing up, hmm. I was born in the Northwest. My parents were farmers. Um, my mother is still alive. She's 94 years old. Living in Canada, my father passed away almost 40 years ago. Um, going to school here in the city, the gutters are always dirty. Mm -hmm. Every the garbage goes in the gutter, the dead dogs goes in the gutter, the dead cats goes in it, and it's still happening. Yeah. So why is it that we cannot make our city clean so that we can have a healthy, clean city? You know, I don't blame the government, I blame the people. 
they must be educated so that they could have, they know what cleansiness is. It's hard, I mean, I shouldn't be saying this on TV, but that's, that's what I see. You know, they get something, they throw it in the gutter. Can you have a garbage pail to put it? And you know, when the sanitation truck comes, you just throw it out. Mm. But it's very, it's very troubling to see the trenches are filled with garbage and the weeds, you know, stagnant water. It's, it's very troubling. Yeah, it does. And I mean, Georgetown is the garden city. Yeah. I mean, that it, it, it should be returned to its former glory. No, and absolutely. coming in from the airport, you know, welcome to Georgetown. Mm. But welcome to what? Dilapidated houses, streets not properly maintained, mm -hmm. the carpets are with grass, you know, it's, it's, it's not welcoming to me. Mm. And it seems like more or less when you look at 50 years since, um, uh, since independence, it seems like you could say Guyana gave each party kind of the, almost an equal chance when you split it up the years between the two of them. It seems like they both gave them an equal chance and, and here's where we are. <laughs> I said 50 years of empty promises. Mm. A lot of people don't see, see it like that, but I think it's empty promises. Because why after so many years, we, we're not going anywhere. You know, people say, um, what is it that you see in Guyana that you, you know, you would like to do? And there is no development. Everything is the same. They're, the homes, I mean, the beautiful homes, that's all. But everything else is, the, the, the thing that really caught my eyes the other day, it's the um, city hall. That is an eyesore in the city. And I wish the government could do something about it. Very, very bad. Absolutely, absolutely. And yeah, the, no, that that's all things that need to be addressed. Uh, I know a lot of that is uh, affected by politics, but uh, and um, actually, that actually reminds me of a question that I'd like to ask uh, Dr. Bandu. So um, I'll bring it back to you. Okay. With this one. Yes, and that. Um, uh, especially politics and political divisions. Uh, another um, big controversy that's on a lot of people's minds is this rift going on in the PPP right now uh, between uh, Kamal Chan, you know, the Gawu president, and uh, the current opposition leader, Brad Jagdeo. Um, so what is the URP's view on this split? Or, or well, rather, this this conflict that's going I on. I think the rift was uh, between them that uh, um, Barzak there is saying that Komal Chan should not go and meet with the government to discuss anything. Um, the URP are saying that Komal Chan is right. If he is the, the he is the the person who is in charge of the union, who are the president of the union, who represent the people then you must truly represent the people, you know? Um, no matter how you may not see the government or you may not like the government, they are the government. And if you want to have anything to discuss to make any change, you have to discuss it with the government, mm. you know? Um, Kumal Chan can't go and discuss it with Barjak there because Barjak there can, is not in that seat where, where the government is. You know, he's in the opposition seat. So he can make a decision. Mm -hmm. the, the government has to make the decision. So we, I totally, totally agree with Mr. Kumal Chan mm -hmm. for going to have his meeting and meet with the government and so forth. You see, there's a lot of problem here with the, the, the older folks in the PPP and the younger folks in the PPP. Mm -hmm. They have always been a rift between them, you know. And it's coming out more and more daily now to show him this rift in the PPP. You were surprised to know member of parliament on the PPP and the opening of the office in Executivo come and endorse the URP. Endorse the URP and to work with the URP because they believe in the URP vision for Guyana. It is so amazing. You know, absolutely. Yeah, no, and and it 
serves as a testament of the message that you know that the URP is spreading that it's one that is relevant it's one that people want to listen to yes apparently. yes people want to listen mm -hmm. to the URP because they have been fooled by both major political party for 50 odd years look we are telling you the people that all the resources in Guyana belongs to you it's yours so they can't give you anything if you are asking me to give you something, I can't give you, it's not mine, it's yours already. How can I give you something what is yours? But people have to be educated to learn these things. That everything that my government belongs to you, the people in Guyana. You know, so I would like to urge each and every one of you who are looking at us, please look at our URP practical talk, look out for our, our newspaper every month, uh, by twice a month it will be coming out. Look out for it and so you can be able to read and see facts. As I always said, if you want the truth, come to the URP. If you want to hear lies, go to the PNC and the APNU and, uh, and the PPP. Thank you and may God bless you. Very okay. good. All right. And so, yes, that's all our time for today's episode of URP Practical Talk. Again, my name is George Gonzalves. And again, thank you, Ms. Ladair. Thank you, Dr. Bandu, of course, as always. Uh, that's all our time for this episode of URP Practical Talk. Again, my name is George Gonzalves, your host for this episode. And as always, we encourage persons to go out and visit the URP's webpage. That is urpguyana.com. And also find us on Facebook, URP Guyana. You